Okay, um, in the last video I showed you how to use, uh, you know, the time spectre tool and the baseline correction tool um, and, you know, how to basically manually deconvolute uh, your peak. Um, there's one thing I want to tell you, you know, <coughs> so like right now the baseline correction tool has been selected. So now, uh, you know, if I try to unclick it, like, uh, like it does not want to unclick. <laughs> Uh, I think this is some sort of a bug uh, because you know all other things you know uh, if I unclick it you know the baseline goes away if I click it the baseline is gone but so uh, to get out of this baseline correction tool you what you need to do is uh, click on this arrow you know the automatic arrow so and you know it will, what happened oh, okay there you go and um, then you're out of it so um, Okay, so uh, so as you can see, it has already put like a fixed collection, thirteen point seven two, thirteen point seven two three. So uh, let's get out of this. Let's uh, say I don't want any baseline correction, right? Okay. Um, now, now what uh, should I show you? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, calibration okay so this is another tab um, you know which basically shows you the calibration general calibration information you know which you already entered in your MS component table right over here 101051 uh, so right now the mode over here is total okay so you know there are other <coughs> settings say you know your calibration is not in this sequence you know it's in some other sequence you know that could very well be possible right so the way you would do this is you know you would go to fixed and then go to browse and then you can choose uh, you know basically a sequence uh, where it is so you know right now it's not uh, I mean our calibration injections are right here in our sequence right so we don't need that so we go back to total um, obviously uh, there are other uh, settings also uh, and I haven't tried it personally but uh, you know uh, you can read the help over here um, and find out what each of these does um, you know help is like F1 so F1 if you click F1 okay I clicked F1 okay there you go um, you know, it will show you uh, the help related to you know calibration settings. So, so that's good. So that's one good thing to remember. F1 is help. So, whenever you have any problems or you know uh, questions like how do I do this, you know, just press F1. And um, um, so the table itself, uh, you know, it's. Uh, I don't think so it's editable I mean this table especially uh, and uh, okay the curve fitting so what is curve fitting so uh, let me bring up the calibration plot um, make sure the peak is selected okay so the reason why it's not showing up is because you know we have these various channels which have been selected and uh, what we need so like like I said like all quantitation and calibration it's always done on the MS quantitation channel for GCMS okay for for mass spec okay so as soon as I click on mass spec and uh, I get components and as soon as I click on components you should see your calibration plot for that component so um, the curve fitting if I do inverted you know basically it just inverts the x and the y axis so that's what it is curve fitting you know it, um, uh, when I think of curve fitting I, I think something different but <laughs> over here it's uh, just uh, interchanging x and y axis so just remember that um, what else uh, I already went over them as component um, table Uh, you know, if you want, you could add in the cast number, chemical formula, or any comments like that you like. 
um, MS detection so like I said like uh, uh, your we use uh, what detection algorithm you want for your peak uh, detection and peak integration so um, ISIS is uh, what I generally use but you know you can very well use Cobra or Genesis um, and extracted ion chromatogram uh, MS default settings so basically what it, what this means is for the extracted ion uh, you know which is like 213 155 it will have uh, it will have the same settings like ISIS settings now if I go to the MS component table and the extracted ion chromatogram if I wanted you know over here it says use default MS settings MS detection settings if I wanted you know for this particular extracted ion 230 I could use very well use Genesis or something else you know and you know so sometimes this is uh, important because you know uh, different extracted ion chromatograms have different shapes and different um, uh, 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 what do you say signal to noise and you know and it calculates a bit differently right each of these algorithms so sometimes ISIS is not the best sometimes you have to use Cobra or sometimes you have to use Genesis so so uh, you have to take a closer look at your own data um, so so I'm done with calibration done with MS settings MS library screening I've already shown you so uh, like, I like I showed you in one of the previous videos you know how to add you just click add and you know go to your folder which is the MS search folder and you should have your libraries in there and just add your libraries SST uh, system suitability test and intelligent run control so your yeah, you know uh, like it's uh, it's pretty powerful uh, frankly speaking I myself haven't used it a whole lot so uh, maybe one of these days I can show you something good with it <laughs> um, basically you know you can control uh, you know depending on say you know uh, you know you uh, maybe in situations like um, where you have to pass a certain criteria right like say your peak asymmetry if it falls above 1.2 1.5 then do this then you know don't don't run your next sample because you know you have to do I don't know maybe conditioning the column or whatever so uh, it, like it's pretty smart controls um, uh, and you can try this if you want um, advanced settings uh, so there are I guess some <laughs> some more settings <laughs> um, uh, what can I say? I, I haven't used any of these. <laughs> uh, peptide table, I bet it's not for GCMS. Uh, composite scoring. Okay, composite scoring is um, uh, basically, you know, what qualifies it as a pass, right? So, uh, so for MS criteria, confirming iron ratios passed. You know, if it doesn't pass, then, you know, this won't be green. Okay isotope dot per, I mean mass accuracy peak alignment uh, peak apex alignment so um, those are some other criteria uh, uh, you know in this so this right now I'm in the processing method uh, pane okay and uh, there are a few more options so you just right click over here and s give page selector go to page selector. so you can see there are a few more other settings some of these are not relevant uh, you know for GCMS but they're relevant for LC and IC um, so what you see over here uh, for example uh, let me show you one of these uh, is uh, chromatogram subtraction so as soon as I do that a new tab op uh, shows up you know which is chromatogram subtraction so here essentially what I can do is I can subtract the chromatogram so let me go to the tick okay and let me go full scale you know let me remove this uh, data point thing the raw data points so that you can see it more clearly okay and um, so right now there's no chromatogram subtraction so um, so like I said like this particular injection is like 1 ppm 
pesticides, NSO pesticides. But I also have NSO pesticides in T matrix, but I also have the T matrix itself. So if I subtract this from this, I should get the pesticides only, right? So and and that might be useful, right? Because you know there's a lot of um, there are a lot of peaks in the matrix, and you know it's, it it can get a bit confusing to know which is pesticides. So what you can do is subtract a fixed injection, okay? And I say I want to subtract the T matrix, okay? And I select. and it subtracts. So obviously uh, there are a lot more peaks uh, than just the pesticides and the reason is because you know the intensities of each of these peaks are not exactly the same so that's why you can see some of these peaks are like uh, negative peaks so uh, but many uh, or at least some of these peaks you know, they are because of uh, uh, let me get this calculation plot out of the way um so but many of these peaks are because of uh the okay so th it's still showing 13 so so whenever you have like this if i say remove time spectra and it will remove because if you remember we had the time spectra tool selected um so 16 uh so uh if i do a library search for Excel, so that's one of the best sides so this is another one so this is an easy way uh, to you know clear out uh, you know all the other junk or ju uh, other matrix uh, peaks easily uh, but uh, but remember like some of these peaks can be due to the matrix itself because you know it does not subtract cleanly so uh, cleanly in sense you know uh, there might be cases where you know um for example this is i bet this is because of the matrix, uh, because the, uh, because it does not do um, what do you say? Uh, because the a uh, peak intensities for the matrix over here are not exactly the same as this one, right? So that's why. But you know, I wanted to show you this one. So uh, uh, if I go back to no subtraction, it will show you the original spectra again. Okay, I think I'll stop here. Um,